Hey, what's up, Ron here. Thank you for joining me in today's video. Finally back to the normal schedule. Finally, we're gonna have a live stream this Thursday. I wanna thank you for joining me in today's video. Today, I'm gonna show you how I prepare for a painting and then how I execute the actual painting. Both of these studies are the same size, but I did learn a lot from doing two versions and it can be really beneficial to do multiple iterations of the same scene. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hey, so first I wanna share with you the prep painting I did for this one. Now, usually my prep paintings are smaller and simpler than the finished painting. In this example, I'm going to paint it the exact same size. I did this as a preparation, but it's not like a sketch. It's just one painting and then I'll do it again for you. Now, just a quick note, because I will discuss it later. I think I got the sky a little better in this one. And I was lucky to an extent, because look at that cloud to the right. You have very soft edges on the right side, but then very soft edges on the left side. And you can actually see the movement of the water seeping down uh, through the, the wet paper and really radiating downwards at a kind of an angle. Now on the left, you have a cloud that is more established. It has clearer edges and I think that works well. And the gap between these and the mountains works a little well. What doesn't work as well, and you will see after the demo, is the ground on, upon which I will improve and I will get a bit of a better impression. Look at the highlights in the distance. They're, they're a little too strong and this is something I want to improve. But overall, I'm quite happy with this one. And if we zoom out, you'll see it has quite a bit of a realistic impression, even though from afar you don't see many details. So with that said, let's jump into the second iteration, the demo itself, and then we'll compare them uh, around the end of the video. So onto the painting itself. Um, I'm going to start with the drawing stage, as always, this time, uh, because it's quite fast. I did not want to do a time lapse. I will show you everything. Uh, as much in real time as possible. Uh, of course, explaining it after the fact will always be a little different. But in any case, uh, first I'm getting that major transition from the horizon uh, and onto the uh, ground, and that's the, the main dividing line. That's the main, I would say, shape uh, for the painting, and you wanna make sure you get that in, in the right spot, which could be different from a painting to painting, of course. But here, I wanted to get it a little higher, just like in the reference photo. And that will leave me enough room for that river to really show it properly, uh, which is the next shape I'm working on. Because you want to think about this really in terms of shapes. And it is something that I talked about a lot in the latest uh, critique videos. It's something a lot of people seem to have an issue with, uh, in which they're trying to paint and draw what they see as they see it. Uh, well, not as they see it to be technically uh, accurate, but are just trying to draw what they know is there. So, for example, drawing a nose as it is with the nostrils, with all the details and all the teeth for the mouth and, and everything, whereas you'll have a much better time painting the shapes you see of light and shadow. And this is why I love these simpler landscapes for practice purposes and for finished paintings as well, because they do allow you to do that uh, very well. So what you get here is, and really squint your eyes, take a few steps back. There's one big shape for the sky that's kind of interrupted by the clouds. And then there's one big shape for the top of the land, another shape for the river, another shape for that piece of land in the middle of the river, and then another shape down below that's a little darker. And as long as you indicate all of these shapes, you're good to go. So what I'm doing now, I put everything down and now I'm putting in the clouds and look at those scribbly lines I'm using and quite light as well. Uh, when I do a dashed line, it indicates that the edge should be quite, um, quite loose and, and kind of lost. I don't want it to be too hard of an edge. Okay, uh, and for the ground, now a lot of establishing the, the sense of depth here will come from getting a gradual wash for the mountains, starting light and then slowly getting dark. And you can really see the difference. Look at the farthest mountain ridge. Look how light it is compared to the trees that are in the f foreground or maybe mid ground. Uh, they are significantly darker. And remember to always be aware of this illusion. When you're looking at the mountain ridge, you're aware, self, you're conscious of the fact that in reality, these mountains are as dark as the mountains closest to us. So we have a tendency to also paint them as dark. No, 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 that's a big no, no. You wanna create a sense of depth, so you have to go light with them. It's very, it's something I see very often with the trees. Someone thinks, okay, the trees are uh, in the distance are as green and bright as the ones in the foreground and they paint them green, strong, bright green, where if you look at reality, they're actually blue. 
they're hazy, they're foggy, they're lighter, they're bluer. Now I'm putting in the highlights, by the way, just indicating where they'll be. So you want to take aerial perspective into consideration. Now here, we're doing a simpler iteration of it. We're painting black and white. So all we have is the value to work with, which makes our life much easier. So here's how I'm gonna go about it. I'm gonna start with a fairly uh, light, flat wash for the sky. And I'm gonna bring this wash downwards. I have the paper at a bit of an angle. I'm only using one color, which is black. Um, I believe this is a black color by White Knights. I'm not sure the, the exact one, but it doesn't matter. Work monochromatically with whichever, with whichever color you want. Uh, and I will, I promise to show more of my actual uh, colors that aren't black. Uh, in, in, a f in future videos, I will try and mention them because a lot of people have asked me to make sure that I mention the colors, but here it's just one black color. So you saw I did a bit of wet and wet for that cloud in the top right corner, and I will go back to that in just a moment and start adding more wet and wet there. But for now, I'm, I'm painting a kind of an underpainting, uh, covering, I believe, everything here, uh, but maybe the water where I want the, the focal point to be. One thing I did learn from the initial uh, attempt was that it was a good decision to make the water uh, paper white. In the painting, they're actually not really the lightest section of the painting. There are some parts of the sky that are lighter, but I did want to make them lighter to bring the focus all the way to the front where the water is, okay? Now I'm putting my clouds here. Uh, the timing is a little off in just a second. I'm gonna close the door, sorry about that. Ruth just walked into the room and opened the door, so there's noise from the living room. Here we go uh, with that line. Sorry, I bumped the mic a bit. Uh, but the timing is a little off on the clouds, which is why I said the sky's a little better uh, on the pre first iteration. But look at what I'm doing here. Not all the water is paper white. The left section of the water has a lot of drop kind of... Um, kind of dropped reflections in it. Uh, I painted the wrong spot here, by the way. Uh, but you'll see it's not white. Like squint your eyes again, take a few steps back. The the Z-shaped kind of or, or triangular or V, uh, sideways V shape uh, is actually stopped towards the left side uh, by all the foliage that reflects in the water. And the only real light section is the one I painted here. So just something to have in mind. Now look at the sky, the edge there in the cloud is starting to get harsh in a place I didn't want to. So I will try in just a moment to, and here I am darkening some other sections of the water. I will try and, and make it move a bit with the sprayer. At this point, the sky here is okay. Could have done a much better, or with the brush, sorry, not with the sprayer. The sky here is okay, could have done a better job. What I still like about this is that the cloud at the top left section does have um, a section that's a little uh, clear edge and then kind of lost edge towards the right. So at least we got some kind of a variety of edges, even though it's not in the place I wanted and it's not as accurate as I'd want it to be. But again, we're working with what we've got and that's perfectly fine and it's one more iteration of the scene. Uh, we can do another one, another one, take our insights from both first iterations and make it happen. Now look at this uh, mountain ridge in the background. This is usually a tricky part for many people because it's easy to paint it too dark or too light, but look at the reference photo. It is quite light compared to the foreground, but it still has some strength. It's not like, it's not as as light as let's say the, the clouds in the lower sky. So you wanna make sure that you preserve that, okay? Now, the reason, by the way, in the first wash, I covered up all the all the distant mountains, including the highlights, is remember what we learned from the first iteration. The highlights were too strong. We needed one wash to bind them to some kind of a light value that is not paper white, to distinct them from the water. And this is exactly what happened here. I cover the initial wash, leaving highlights that are as light as that. Not, not paper light, but as light as the first wash, and which is why I covered everything up, including the highlights, because they weren't light enough to justify them leaving them paper white. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I know I'm a little all over the place with my explanation, getting back to business and work, so I'm trying to do my best. Now look at what we got here. Lighter for the mountains in the background, slightly darker for the mountains that are closer, and now even darker for where the trees are. Okay, trees and foliage in this specific light and shadow overcast condition tend to be darker, which is why they're darker here. Um, so, so you get this beautiful gradual transition from light to dark, and that's what's going to provide the depth. 
So we, we have our bases covered when it comes to the value. Another means of creating a sense of depth will be to uh, add some details to the foreground. That'll distinct it further and make it feel like there is better, more details are visible in the foreground, so it's closer and so on. Uh, so we're working with whatever means we have at our disposal. And that's really something you wanna have in mind. And, and one thing I love about monochromatic work, you make it easier. So now I'm, I'm painting this kind of an island. It's not an island, it's just a piece of land where the river curves. Uh, and I make sure to bring it more to the right because in the first attempt, it wasn't enough to the right. Uh, and funny fact, when I showed you the finished painting, it's actually after I improved it. So I will show you another version of that first attempt uh, before I improved it in the end of this video. And so it'll be a bit of a funny, I don't know, it doesn't matter as much. Just wanted to mention it. If, if you got it, you got it. It's not as important. Uh, but now we get to the very foreground, very close foreground, where we have to make it dark enough so that it's clear that it's a foreground. But I don't want to go too far here because it's not black at all. Uh, to, to, to be more specific, the trees in the background are probably darker than this foreground. Um, and I am putting in a few dots to indicate some trees in the foreground. These will melt into it and end up being lighter. So don't worry about, you know, going too dark here. It's, it's fine. Um, and we're actually really nearing the uh, end of the process. There isn't much more to go. Um, just kind of doing final touches to make sure that uh, everything uh, looks good. So to bring out a few details in the foreground, I find it's really important uh, to give the viewers enough things to look at and again, to further enhance the feeling that it is a foreground. You see me putting in a few touches uh, in the background, but very few. I don't wanna go too far there because uh, remember that it's still kind of a mid to farther uh, background. Now I'm just adding in a few small details I see here and there. This is a very small piece of paper so there isn't much to uh, add or much room to add. So I'm just adding the basic stuff. The thing I'll challenge you to do is to simply take a few steps back from the screen or if it's on your phone just pull it back a bit and you will see a beautiful fairly realistic impression in a lot of sections of this painting. It's really really nice. So one thing I should have done maybe is darken that mountain ridge in the left. Uh, side. It should be a little darker. Um, the mountains in the background, arguably. But yeah, uh, dropping in a few other trees like that, just to hint again, this is the foreground. This is where we see more details. And now for the last move, I'll pre-wet the paper and go a little darker with the cloud. Now notice the mistake I made. I should have pulled the water even lower, go darker lower. Why is that? Because if you look at the water now, I'm putting in a darker shadow, it will run down all the way to the edge of where I wet the paper and it will kind of stop there. So even though I did it wet and wet, I'll still get a somewhat harsh transition there. That's my bed, should have made the uh, pre-wet area larger and lower hanging. Okay, it's mild, it won't be as noticeable, but just another thing I could have improved. Uh, but with that, we're <laughs> pretty much done. Let me show you the two versions. So I think this is quite interesting. And let me set this aside. I'm gonna show you both uh, again. Actually, let me zoom out a bit. And I love how there is basically stuff to love in the first version and the second version as well. I'm gonna sign it uh, as we uh, talk about it. Uh, so it's very interesting. Uh, that the clouds on that second version, wow, it's really hard to write and uh, talk at the same time. The clouds here uh, didn't turn out the way I wanted to, and to be honest, I was quite lucky here uh, because you see that kind of a direction of movement. Maybe I tilted the paper more and things kind of seeped through. Tried recreating the effect here and understood very quickly I'm not gonna make it, so I did some uh, damage control and that's it. Um, what I do love about this one is that uh, part here that's slightly lighter than here, so you get a nice smooth transition. This one has that um, other wash though that works in its favor as well. I love the shape of the, the river here a little more than this one. The wet and wet touches are really nice. Actually, here I got the timing better, so it does feel like maybe some trees in the foreground. Uh, but in any case, you'll never get the same result, and that's the point here. What you want to do is practice it. Do the same painting multiple times if you uh, if you really want to kind of get a full understanding of the scene. Uh, the highlights here, I think, turned out much better, much more random, much more organic. Uh, again, it's something that as you do the scene more and more, uh, it will improve. I think this one's a little better in the overall scheme of things because the composition is more interesting. This reaches a little more to the right than here. It's those subtle differences uh, that matter. I did add a bit more, as you saw, darker clouds here, just to maybe 
make these less uh, identical just like not just a thin wash but rather a cloud and another cloud tried at least uh, so yeah the clouds here are better the ground here is better and all in all i do feel like i learned a lot from that second iteration and hopefully you did as well now let's wrap it up face to face so thank you so much once again for watching i really hope you enjoyed this one again pluses to this one pluses to this one minuses to this one minuses to this one learn how to connect the two and then create a more close to uh, a perfect version because you'll never get that perfect perfect version I think it's just not something that's conceptually possible you can be super happy with it though uh, and again this Thursday we're gonna have a live stream it's gonna be really fun by the way I think I'll put this one or this one I'm, I haven't decided yet uh, for sale on my website we'll see on my gallery uh, but I do hope to see you on Thursday's live stream take care I hope you've been doing well I'm gonna go slowly back to work back to business replying to more comments more messages I took a little bit of a time off but much needed uh, it was a great rest now I'm full of energy and happy to be back We'll see you again in the next one.